Nutrition is, of course, very important. I don't mean just dieting. I'm not in favor of dieting, especially the kind of dieting where you yo-yo, or you're too fat, you lose weight, you regain it again. That doesn't help very much. <coughs> I am in favor of body providing for the body all the essential nutrients that are needed, and this follows along great pioneers like Roger Williams, who was uh, who extremely impressive in the work that he did, showing that we are all individuals, and that there's no panacea diet. There isn't any one diet that's good for everyone. This is one of the mistakes made by many of the people who write books. They they, they find that a diet helps them themselves. They think, my God, it's helped me. It's going to help everyone else. It doesn't work that way. So that's why you have these uh, these huge numbers of diet books, high protein, low protein, high fat, low fat, high sugar, low sugar. This is not the way to go. But when, so, when, so you have to try to find out what is the best possible diet for individuals. Now this is a problem today because our diets have been so changed in the past 10,000 years. 10,000 years ago the average diet did not include any grains, except sparingly, did not include any dairy product because there was no agriculture, <coughs> did not include any sugar because the mankind hadn't yet discovered how to grow sugar beet or sugar cane. So the diet 10,000 years ago to which we had adapted over the previous 100,000 or 200,000 years was a diet that was rich in meat, fish, uh, no grains, rich in uh, vegetables, fruit, nuts, and seeds. And occasionally, if they found a beehive with honey in it, they might be able to get some honey. So that was the standard diet to which we had adapted, which I think is still the best diet in the world. Now, 10,000 years is a blink of an eye in terms of evolution, and we today have exacted the same nutritional apparatus that our ancestors had 10,000 years ago, and yet our diet has enormously changed. <coughs> our diet today consists primarily of the grains, wheat, staple foods, wheat, rice, and corn. These are staples. And these are and they, these are not even in their natural form. They are refined. The grain, the, the wheat germ, the germ and the outer layers of these grains, which are the richest source of the B vitamins, are removed and fed to animals. They are they the ones that profit from this. <laughs> so the diet generally are not good. And I think that a large variety of today's diseases are caused by the fantastic change in the diet which have occurred, especially in the past hundred years. In 1945, in Canada, the average grocery store was very small. You might have 60 to 100 items. And if you went into an average grocery store in 1945 and you could shop blind, no matter what you picked up, it wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad. Because <coughs> they had whole grains and they had meat and fish and so on. If you go to a supermarket in Canada today with 20,000 items, most of which are junk, in fact the only safe place to shop in a supermarket is around the walls, because that's where you find your meat and your fish and your vegetables and fruit. If you go to the center of a store, you find the packaged goods, which are very attractive looking, smart design, taste good. In fact, if you look at the cereal section, the breakfast section, you'll find maybe 100 different types of cereals. That's a lie. They're not 100 different types. They're all made from the same thing. They're all made from oats or wheat, sugar, and, and uh, various additives. So our choice is not any greater today than it was. In fact, it's worse. Now, we haven't had a time yet to adapt to the change in our diet. This is happening to the detriment of our society. I think that we will adapt eventually, but nature will exhort the price that we will have to die off. Many of the people who can't adapt or who are not intelligent enough to eat the way they should. <coughs>